Hello and welcome to another tutorial from Pretty in Paint School. Today we're going to talk about how to create a diamond or argyle pattern on your wall. The goal of this video is to help you create this beautifully patterned wall all by yourself, making sure to give you the tools to achieve the same beautiful results while saving you the time of frustration of figuring it out on your own. Let's start out with what you need to complete this project. Of course, you will need paint either one color or two, depending on if you're creating your design based on your current color. You'll need all of the general supplies you might expect to do some painting, but let's list them here just to make sure you don't forget anything. Nothing is worse than going to start a big project and not quite having what you need. Delays of any kind during a paint project can be quite disruptive to your home. I've broken this project down into 10 easy to follow steps. Make sure you download the printable instructions to help you tackle this project while not having to worry about starting and stopping this video throughout. These are the colors in which the client chose for these examples. This fan deck has enough contrast between colors that we were able to use the next color on the page for the accent colors on each wall. Depending on which fan deck you're using, you may want two to four spaces to, between your colors, depending on how much contrast you'd like. If you already have your base color painted in the room, the next step will be to measure your wall. You'll need to make note of your height as well as the width of your wall, and you'll need to measure in several places to make sure your room is square. Many rooms in many homes have slight discrepancies. If this is the case, you may need to consider adjusting your markings in the next steps. If the wall isn't off by much, this likely won't cause much of an issue for you. This project has a pretty average size wall of a room measuring it at 92 inches tall and 120 inches wide. After you've measured the size of your wall, you'll need to find the measurements in which to place your markings. You'll need to decide the numbers of rows you want as well as columns. Make sure to plot out your wall markings on paper as shown in the next slide for ease in marking walls. This was my biggest mistake on this project and I scrambled to plot out the markings on a small scrap of cardboard I had floating around. You will be dividing your height by the number of rows you want and then dividing that number by two to find the horizontal point in the diamond. And you will also be dividing your width by the number of columns you want. The black dots on this slide represent the outer points of the diamonds. The pink dots represent areas in the middles of the diamond or space that won't be painted with the accent color on the wall. The next step in your process will be to mark your wall according to the measurements you have taken. You will likely want to start off by marking a small mark in the center of the wall just to compare other measurements as you go to ensure you catch any mishaps early. I recommend using pencil for marking as it will erase or wash off or be painted over. After making your mark at the center point, you will want to start making your marks on the outside edges and then work your way in. Make sure to check the straightness of your lines as you complete each section, cross-checking with other measurements as you go. After you've made your marks on the wall, you can start to create the outside edges of your diamonds with tape. Work your way across the wall, starting top to bottom, left to right. I recommend you use a high quality tape like frog tape to make sure your lines are crisp after removal. I recommend putting little pieces of tape in the places that will not be painted with your accent color. This way you can easily keep track of where you need to paint your accent color. Make sure to focus on creating nice straight pointy tips on your diamonds. To help cut your tape straight, you can use a fingernail, a knife, or a putty knife. Congratulations, you did it. Step eight is to paint. Before you commit to painting your accent color, you now should paint the outside edges of your diamonds in your base color. Applying moisture to the edge of the tape helps activate the adhesive in the edge of the tape. Again, making sure your edges stay nice and crisp. After you've prepared your edges and they have dried, you can move on to painting your accent color. Depending on the color you've chosen, this will usually require two to three coats. Make sure to check your taped areas for accent color touch-ups as they are much easier to do with the tape still attached. Once everything is dry, you can now remove your tape. You will want to make sure you remove it slowly at a 90 degree angle to make sure you avoid rips and tears in the drywall and previous paint. Waiting too long to remove the tape can cause the same kind of havoc to your wall. After your tape is removed, do a final round of touch-ups with both colors. Make sure to address any extra pencil marks during this process as well. And there you have it, a fresh new wall for your space. 